How we doing? How we doing? This is Destination Denver, Colorado, and I've got a great one for you today. I'm giving you the best neighborhoods to live in when moving to Denver, Colorado. Let's do it. This is Destination Denver, Colorado. I am your host, Jimmy Everts. And listen, if you're interested in learning all the ins and outs, pros and cons, of moving to or around Denver, Colorado, then this is the channel for you. So that subscribe button and notification icon popping up below or beside me, wherever my editor wants it, make sure you're clicking that as I'm dropping new videos each and every week for you. And listen, as much as I love getting a little creative here on camera for you, I'm also a licensed loan officer covering the entire state of Colorado and team with some of the state's best realtors. So that number and email popping up below, I'm always the person answering your phone calls, answering your texts, answering your emails, there to be a resource for you if and when you need me. All right, so now that we have that fun-filled stuff out of the way, let's get to what we're here for, and that is the best neighborhoods when moving to Denver, Colorado. And we're gonna start with number one, which is Park Hill. Now, I wanna be clear on this. Park Hill is one of those neighborhoods, when I first moved to Denver and I would hang around in it, I thought to myself, like, what's up with this? That's not that great of a neighborhood. But Park Hill is your quintessential old school, been around forever, literally over 100 years, neighborhood in Denver. Just to the east side of town, excuse me, northeast side of town, Park Hill has a lot of big lots, a lot of single detached homes. You're gonna see a lot of mature trees, and it's just a great neighborhood to walk around. Now, as I mentioned, I didn't really get it at first. I had to actually hang out with friends who lived in Park Hill or had just moved there. I actually had a couple clients that closed their homes there in 2018 that I was close with. And as I started to spend time in that community and walk around, after a while, you just sort of get it. Now, locals will split Park Hill into North Park Hill and South Park Hill. South Park Hill tends to be a little more popular and a little more desirable as far as home purchases most likely because it is closer to some of the parks and it's closer to downtown Denver. And as far as city living goes, Park Hill does give you those big lots, those bigger size houses. You're not gonna see some new builds there. Park Hill is very historical. So most of the work there, you're gonna see some older homes. Some of them have been restored. Some of them have been flipped. You're gonna see a little bit of that. But as far as just a nice neighborhood to walk around that's close to parks and close to a lot of scenery, doesn't get much better than Park Hill. Number two on my list, and you can't avoid talking about it when you talk about Denver, and that is Cherry Creek. So Cherry Creek, one, gives you some of the more luxury end homes that you're going to see. If you drive around the outskirts of Cherry Creek, you're gonna see some of the nicest houses that you're gonna see anywhere in Denver. A lot of single family homes. There are some townhomes and condos there, but the single family homes, and especially some of the duplexes you're gonna see, that's two houses stuck together, you're gonna to be blown away by some of the architecture there, both modern and historical, Cherry Creek has got it. What sets Cherry Creek apart from just about any other neighborhood in Denver is its walkability when it comes to its shops, its restaurants, and its cafes. Cherry Creek has about 10 blocks by four blocks of nothing but stores, cafes, some of the best restaurants you're gonna find. And for me, I can tell you, there aren't very many weeks where I'm not visiting Cherry Creek, whether it be for business meetings, coffee with friends. I would tell you I go there to shop, but I don't shop except for Amazon boxes showing up in my front door. But if you're into networking, if you're into getting out and about with your friends, chances are a lot of those activities, or at least a good portion of those activities are gonna take place in Cherry Creek. It has a little bit of everything. And listen, write this down now. Cherry Creek is the best place to go when you're sad because people like to shop when they're sad and Cherry Creek is literally filled with shopping. It also has Cherry Creek Mall and I just feel like malls are, are dying. They were like part of my childhood. They bring back nostalgia. So whenever I walk into a large building with overpriced goods and a food court filled with food that's gonna give me gut rot and basically ruin the rest of my weekend, it just brings me back to high school. So number three on my list and probably number one when it comes to fun and getting outside and some activities is Rhino slash Lower Downtown or Lodo. So Rhino, locals will call it Five Points, kind of a historical area, uh, a part of town that connects to Lower Downtown, that kind of runs side by side. 
Rhino has become one of the better areas to just get out and about. It's filled with a lot of nightclubs and bars and in a, a variety of places that you just don't see in other parts of Denver, specifically when I talk about nightclubs or just places if you wanna get out and have some drinks and dance. It's got a lot of the newer restaurants, a lot of great places you're gonna to wanna to check out there, and it's got a ton of development. So lower downtown itself, that's apartments and condos. You're close to Coors Field, you're right in the heart of Denver, and basically from the mid 90s up until about 2010, 2011, if you were going out in Denver, it was in Lodo, it was in lower downtown. Rhino has kind of stretched that out a bit. There's a lot of new construction there, both houses that have been flipped and re renovated. You have a lot of new townhomes, you have a lot of new condos, a lot of new life there. I've always enjoyed getting out to Rhino. I've always enjoyed, I'll keep going back and forth. You'll hear it in, in the words I use. I'll say five points sometimes, I'll say Rhino sometimes. We get indoctrinated, I can't help it. But five points is, is one of those areas where you just see a lot, it runs right along the North Platte River, beautiful scenery, a lot of new development. So Rhino and Lodo are definitely gonna be popular to you if you wanna get out and about a lot. If you want a lot of walkability to the restaurants and nightclubs you're gonna hang out at, if you are looking more towards apartments, condos, some townhomes. Uh, five Points, Rhino, they're gonna have some areas for single family homes. You are not going to find that in lower downtown, but Five Points have some options for it. But definitely nightlife is a big fixture in those communities. A lot of great restaurants to go to. The source is definitely a place to write down. And Five Points also just got a Pastino's. Ooh, happy hour alert. If you're looking for a great happy hour, you gotta hit up Pastino's. $5 pitchers, cheap wine, charcuterie boards, if I say that word correctly, you will show up for happy hour, end up wrecking the rest of your day, but write that stuff down. Pastino's for happy hour. All right, moving along to neighborhood number four, and one of my personal favorites is Wash Park. If you hear anyone call it Washington Park, they're probably not from Denver or they haven't been here very long. So Wash Park is, uh, again, one of those more affluent areas. It's a very popular, desirable neighborhood to be in, extremely walkable. Wash Park is one of the coolest parks that Denver has to offer running, biking, uh, kayaking. They got a little lake there. They got a lot of different venues. It's big for weddings. It's big for a lot of outdoor events, 5Ks, marathons. They do a little polar plunge action in February or March for the Special Olympics. So the community around Wash Park, you know, talk about some of the most expensive homes to buy uh, just being specific here are the homes that run right alongside Wash Park. They're both incredible to look at and incredible to think about how much they cost. That's just the houses that are right up against it. Now, the community itself, again, you have a lot of walkability and you're close to certain streets like Pearl Street, as an example, that are filled with restaurants, coffee shops, and those shops. So you talk about these neighborhoods that give you a little bit of everything. It gives you a great park to spend time outdoors in, all year round. It gives you a lot of places if you just want to go grab a bite to eat or get a drink, cup of coffee, maybe again do some shopping, whether you're sad or happy, I don't know. And then you have homes of a, a lot of different varieties. You've got some places that have been scraped, so you see some new builds. You've got some places with a lot of history behind them. So Wash Park really gives you that variety of everything. Now, it's not necessarily nightlife centric, right? Wash Park is a little more chill, a little more calm, uh, I would say family or, you know, when you're in that relationship, just kind of looking for that neighborhood. But just about anybody, if you can afford to live in Wash Park, it's going to be a place you're going to want to check out. And listen, I know you just dug that last neighborhood. So this is the perfect time for you to hit up that phone number, that email popping up below. Always the person answering your calls, answering your texts, answering your emails, days, nights, weekends. When you're up, I'm up. All right, neighborhood number five, and one of my favorites is Cap Hill. So Capitol Hill, obviously located downtown, pretty close to the Capitol, runs along Colfax and Broadway. Not gonna talk about traffic this time because my editor loves when I talk about traffic. Those two roads make up an access point for Cap Hill. So Cap Hill is your basic downtown living. A lot of apartments, a lot of condos, great nightlife. Now you're gonna see a lot of single family homes in Cap Hill. And you may think, well, there are plenty of single family homes here. 
But keep in mind, a lot of those have been chopped into apartments. You might have a three, maybe even some four story buildings that have been chopped into three or four apartments. I've seen one home that had five apartments in it. I wish I could buy it, it was a little out of my price range. But Cap Hill gives you a little bit of everything because you still have some city feel, you've got some parks nearby that you can hang out in, including Cheeseman Park and Congress Park, two of my favorites. And we had a happy hour alert earlier. Now is a perfect time to, for me to give you a breakfast alert. While it is technically on the outskirts of Cap Hill, along Colfax is a place called Pete's Kitchen. Write it down again, Pete's Kitchen. If you're going for breakfast or you're leaving the bars at two o'clock in the morning, which is the best time for breakfast, nothing beats Pete's Kitchen. It's a Denver classic. And Cap Hill, as I mentioned, also runs along Colfax and runs along Broadway. And those are two hot spots for different bars, restaurants, nightclubs. I can't really tell you they're shopping there. I haven't seen a lot of that, but some of the best bars you're gonna check out in all of Denver. Now I'm gonna get into a couple of my personal favorites. Number six, the Highlands. Of all the places in Denver that I have spent a lot of time in, but haven't lived in yet, Highlands ranks number one for me. Why do I keep it number six? I couldn't tell you, I like saving some of the best for last. So the Highlands is just on the outskirts of Denver. It's still considered Denver proper, but it's just across from Confluence Park and the Millennium Bridge. The thing that makes, Millennial Bridge, excuse me. The thing that makes the Highlands magic to me is it gives you that perfect mix of close to the city and city vibe with, with some of those restaurants, bars we talk about, but it also gives you that sense of the suburbs. There's some single family homes, there's some maturity to the properties, they've got decent sized lots. You still get that city feel for it because there's gonna be times if you don't have a garage where you're gonna struggle with parking, but in certain neighborhoods within the Highlands, there's a ton of walkability and some of my favorite places to go. You have a certain area, 32nd and Lowell is a great intersection in which you have El Camino, great place for margaritas, gotta hit up that. They just opened a Little India, great Indian food. Of course, it did take the place of the Matador, which is one of my favorite Mexican restaurants, but we live. 32nd Lowell is also home to Sweet Cow which is one of the most fantastic ice cream places you will find in your life. And even if you don't like oatmeal cookie, I'm telling you right now, get a pint of the oatmeal cookie ice cream and then call or text me to tell me how good it was because I'm telling you, mwah, magnifique. And as you take the Highlands closer to Denver, you're gonna run into some of the more popular spots to hit up, including Happy Camper and Avanti's, fan favorites, Avanti's, probably one of the best summer places to hit up. So you walk into a big, big cafeteria with a lot of different food trucks, a lot of different options as far as foods, bars on multiple floors. And then when you go out on their patio, they have the best, or certainly one of the best views of downtown Denver, because you're right on the edge there. I would show you some interior footage of Avanti's, but if you go anywhere near there with a camera, they tend to cry at you and complain. That's the one knock I have on Avanti's, but I don't hate them for it because at the end of the day, a camera just wouldn't do it justice. Make sure you check it out. Now, as you keep moving west out of the Highlands, you're gonna run into my number seven, and that is my home for 10 years before moving a little farther west which is Sloan's Lake. So Sloan's Lake is the one body of water that is anywhere near downtown Denver. Granted, it's only about two miles, two and a half miles around, so it's not exactly a huge lake, but by Denver standards, it is. And Sloan's Lake is one of those communities, and I'm gonna attach along with Sloan's Lake, Edgewater, which is just on the other side of Sheridan, which I'm probably showing you a map of right about now, you see that Sloan's Lake is one of those neighborhoods that builds off of what I was talking about with the Highlands. So it's got that suburb vibe, you've got some great houses in there, but they've built a lot of these communities such as right on 17th Avenue running along Sloan's Lake. It used to be a hospital called St. Anthony's and now it is this huge development. It includes the Lake House, which is an incredible apartment building in which the penthouse went for $3 million. It's a bit extreme. But it's got a lot of shops and restaurants within that community. You can, a lot of walkability in there. 
And in Sloan's Lake, you're gonna see a ton of new builds, a lot of attached homes, a lot of townhomes or slot homes as they are called here in Denver, in which you might have five, six homes attached to each other, garages underneath. I own one of them myself, really cool properties. And one of the big things there is rooftops. All the houses, including the one I own in Sloan's Lake has a nice rooftop. You get a good view of downtown, great vibe. So Sloan's Lake gives you that nightlife aspect. You've got things to do. It gives you a lot of daytime activity. You've got, again, that great lake right there. And you have different things within the community to do and it just keeps improving. Sloan's Lake, I mention the Highlands a lot and I always tend to link the Highlands and Sloan's Lake. They, they tend to flow together. Well, the Highlands had this renovation over the last 10, 15 years with all these restaurants, cafes, shops, and you're starting to see that pour into Sloan's Lake and it keeps moving west. And I'm gonna throw in a little bonus for you. Number eight, if I can get my hands to work, which is Central Park. Now Central Park, previously called Stapleton, you might still see Stapleton on certain maps where the airport was, but modern times we have changed that name to Central Park. So Central Park has some of the newest developments that you're going to see in Denver. It's got certain areas out there in which the homes are just a few years old and it's been thought out. They're planned developments. So you're going to see uh, communities in which you have the rec centers and pools and shops and things that make it extremely convenient for living. And there's more and more being built out in that area for people to get more and more involved with getting out towards that. Central Park is also out closer to the airport, not close, but closer to the airport and the Gaylord Resort, which are two obviously popular and needed attractions in Denver. Within Central Park or part of Central Park is also Northfield, a newer development out there. Definitely something to check out. I have some, some friends and some clients that have moved out that way. I, I gotta tell you, I wasn't really hooked on Central Park before. It was a part of town that I didn't know very well, but now that I've had some people move out that way and spend some time, it's got some really great restaurants and the communities are very cool. It's got some of the cooler houses that I have been in there. Now, you're gonna see in a lot of developments, something I'll mention and you'll see it a little bit in Central Park, is that a lot of these homes, a lot of developments, Golden, as an example, if you're checking out Golden, Colorado, the houses can be really close together in these new developments. You have that a little bit in Central Park, but in a lot of those communities, they've done a good job. They've given you a decent sized lot, a decent sized yard. And then every single one of these neighborhoods has a lot of outdoor or common space with playgrounds and walking tracks and different things for, for kids and families to enjoy. Very safe, very walkable. Central Park is definitely becoming one of those more popular places to live. Now those are just eight of the best neighborhoods to live in Denver and Lord knows there are plenty more of them. So if you wanna hear about more, make sure to click that subscribe button as well as the notification icon down below or even better, make sure to hit me up. My phone number and email popping up as well, available for a call, text, email, available when you are. This is Destination Denver, Colorado. This is the best neighborhoods when moving to Denver, Colorado. Until next time, peace.